Today, we're gonna to do a bit of bush cooking. Mmm. It's really good. <laughs> it's really, really nice. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Warwick Naylor's Boomerang Adventures. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to cook meat four different ways out in the bush. So it's a little bit different to the usual episode I do on nature, but I thought I'd just try the cooking thing this week. And uh, I'm gonna be showing you first how to get a fire ready, um, a specific method that I've used over the years that I've found successful for cooking pretty much anything out in the bush and keeping it safe at the same time. So I'm gonna be cooking up a hare or a jackrabbit as they're called in some parts of the world. And we're gonna see how that goes. So I have to make a slight apology for not bringing an episode uh, last week because I had a technical glitch in that the power went out right in the middle of when I prepare the episode to upload and it was out for quite a few hours so I couldn't uh, get it ready with that window of opportunity that I had. So I hope you enjoy this week's episode and I'll catch you at the end of it. Now, if you want to light a fire in the bush, you've got to do it properly otherwise you can start a bushfire it's moving into bushfire season it's not uh, there yet but um, you know just because it's not bushfire season doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful about lighting a fire so i like to dig a trench and i'm um, going to cook over the top of the trench and it's uh, conserves the heat more so it directs it more at the at whatever you're, you're cooking and it stops the wind from blowing the fire um, away from you and then lighting it up somewhere else. So I'll start with the trench. So you want to get the the hole or the trench about oh, about a foot deep if you can. That really does allow you to have enough room to have your coals and your ash start building up. It does take a little bit of elbow grease, but particularly in these sorts of soils, I guess in some other parts of the world, we might have dug a three foot hole by now, but it's worth putting in the effort. Also, I'll mention that if the wind's coming from that way, your trench should run that way. Because if you run your trench lengthways with the wind, the wind comes along and blows it out. So you run it across 90 degrees or right angles to the wind. And also, good at night time these trench fireplaces because it's a lot harder for people if you, if you want to have a bit of privacy it's a lot harder for people to see the flames because they're all inside the hole so to keep your fire fairly low I don't have it flaring too much it um, it's a lot more private and another thing about the trench fire it gives you a shelf so instead of building something up around the sides to lay down uh, lay your implements on it you can actually literally lay it across the dirt and that's your shelf so that saves you carrying something which is always good in a, a camping or survival type situation or whatever you don't want to be carrying heaps of gear or any more gear than you, than you really have to I'll just square off the bottom. If you square off the bottom, it gives you more room for coals. Okay. Now, for the lighting of the fire. We'll get some leaves. I brought a little bit of paper. Could have just a little bit, just to get the flame started. And that catches the leaves a bit better. So, let's see some dry leaves. It's been a bit of rain the last um, couple of days, so let's 
grab some small sticks. Now, I've talked about this before on the channel, always, it's been a bit wet, a bit rainy. Get the leaves and the sticks that are up off the ground because they'll be drier or be, or be completely dry. But it's everything on the ground has got that little bit more moisture in it. I'll try to find some leaves up in the bush or something. It's worth taking your time to collect a few. There's nothing like wait, wasting matches. So, leaves down there first with your paper. If the heat travels up, remember to have your fire at the bottom of stuff you lighten up, so otherwise you'll miss, miss it getting burnt and the flame will just go out. Right, see that? The whole fire is under the ground. The flame is no danger at all. It's not going to touch any of this surrounding area. So you can relax while that burns down, contains all the heat within the earth, and you can get set up ready to start your cooking. So now we've got to get into that. I'm just breaking off little side branches off this straight stick here to make up a rotisserie. So this will be something that we place across the, uh, the trench. So the trench is going to be running that way. This will be across the trench using a green stick so it doesn't burn up. We'll put our meat across there and we'll just give it a spin every 10 or 15 minutes just gently like that so it can cook all the way through and I'll whittle the end off one of these sticks ends here just to, uh, so we can feed it on and I'll have to get a decent knife for that actually I'll just... and um, spend a couple of minutes doing this so this will probably be the only time where whittling for me is actually being a useful exercise most of the time it's a uh, time burner but now <laughs> all that practice is going to be worth it now it's a good idea when you got to when you do some camp cooking that you don't cook over flame cook over the coals because the coals it's a gentler heat and it's more consistent heat so if when you got a flame it's moving so it's got hot and cold hot and cold when it is touching the thing that you're cooking it's too hot, so it it's sort of singes everything all the time. You want a nice steady heat like an oven, and that's what we're creating with this fire here. So it'll be, because under the ground, it'll have that, there'll be a general heat just surrounding it, and then there's the heat off the coals themselves, which feeding it up. And uh, being, a, I don't know, it's probably going to cook something around about 200, 180 degrees more like an oven. That's what you want. Yeah. The last of the flames is just starting to finish up and we can sit the frying pan in like that um, without it being too hot and we can put some um, going to use some alfoil uh, cook the bit of hair meat in the alfoil and I'm going to put the rotisserie over the top of it like that and that's three methods and just for a bit of fun I could just chuck on the hair straight on the coals and just see what happens so I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen so um, we'll uh, yeah, just do those four methods of cooking now 
and um, have a bit of a test at the end to see which one is the best because I've never cooked hare meat or, or jackrabbit meat before and uh, I've marinated it in salty water for about um, four days I think and it's uh, so it's probably nice and soft or soft as it can get and so we'll try it with these different methods and see which method of cooking is the best. Okay, well, it's certainly a big enough amount of meat here for a feed. It's a, uh, it's not even a fully grown hare. It's probably, probably just over three quarter grown. And it's, so which, which will be working in our favor because it'll be more tender being younger. So I'll cut it up into probably, I don't know, maybe, well, four pieces because I'm going to do four methods of cooking. And I've used no flavours or anything apart from salt and that's just to draw the blood out and to make it a bit sort of nicer to, to eat. So we'll use the frying pan as a chopping board. So I'll go just above the hip there, straight down. Both sides. Oh, the meat's very dark. Okay, and then cut down one side of the spine through the leg. Same trick, just cut it back to the spine, cut through the bottom rib, back to the spine on the other side. So then we snap it there. Give it a twist, get back to the tendons and ligaments, and then you just got to find. A spot that's soft, you try not to touch the meat, so try not to touch the bone with the knife because every time you do, it takes the edge off the knife and you don't get such a clean cut next time because she's blunt. Now, cut a leg off here, the front leg. So, what you do, you just cut down the, the inside of the chest, follow it along, follow the ribs along on the inside, and you quite easily. Get a nice piece that doesn't require touching the bone at all. So there we've got our we've got five pieces, and we'll put probably put two on the the rotisserie or one of the large pieces. So we'll just see whatever fits where and make it up as we go along. Now that. Through there, one leg, and we'll probably put, we'll leave this one for the frying pan, and put this one on the other, the other one on the rotisserie there like that, we'll probably chuck this one in the coals, and we'll put that one in the alfoil. So we'll put it on the rotisserie first, coals are looking really good now exactly where you want them. Now it's very hot just in there. And it's a good thick green stick so she's not going to burn. It's going to take quite a while to burn that stick. Now I don't really want to do this but I will just for the sake of the experiment I'm just going to chuck it straight on the coals and see what happens. We'll put this one here, I've got to get some alfoil and put it in that. Depending on how hot the fire is, um, I'd say it's pretty hot, so we'll put it shiny side out. Reflect the heat a bit more. 
Okay. Put that the other end. Just like that. And the last one. And the frying pan. Now, I'm going to use butter because there's virtually no fat in hair meat. And um, it's going to burn if I don't put a decent whack of butter in there. Alright, now it's just a waiting game. And keep an eye, make sure as much as possible, possible that nothing burns. Okay, well, I've just started the first turning over. I've turned the um, I guess it's the, the the back section of the hair over, and then the kidneys there. They're, they're almost done. Not that I'll be eating them. And I'm just about to turn over the the rotisserie side of it. So it's now very well cooked on that part. Um, just the thermal energy that's inside that pit is great for the heat and the radiant energy coming off those coals is enough. It's already you know charring it where it's quite close to them. I've turned the the rib cage over and it's doing what I thought it would do. It's uh, basically burning. But I'll probably pull that out earlier than the others and see if I can salvage at least some of the meat off it and see if it's okay. And I've turned over this bit in the alfoil and I know it's not burning because I'd be able to smell it, be able to smell the protein burning, so it's okay although this is burning, this rib cage here. I think I'll um, get that out pretty soon. So there's our update on the cooking. Sounds good. I've just taken this out of the fire a little while ago because it was just going to uh, disintegrate into carbon and end up in somebody's lungs. So we'll move it all across and see how it all goes. Get away from the heat a bit. Okay, well I reckon as far as ease of cooking the rotisserie is, is the winner and it's so tender, I, didn't, I honestly didn't expect the meat to be so tender, um, soaking it in salty water like a brine for, for four days has really done the trick, plus it's probably a, a young a young animal. So it's not the sharpest knife in the world and it's just cutting through that really nicely. It's actually, you'd probably call that um, rare just there. Um, I'll avoid that. I'll just do a bit more, get a bit more side where it's uh, cooked a bit better, a bit more thoroughly. Yeah, that's better. Better meat. Look at that. Good stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, top quality, mate. Really nice. Really good. And the flies think so, too. So, that was the back leg. I'll have a bit of a go at the front leg. A bit here. Make sure it's well done. Yep. Yeah, it's well done. Yeah, good stuff. But on a par with the back leg. Now this is uh, what we just put straight on the coals. Not as good looking, but um, it's still, I guess it's still done. And you know the meat's gone grey; it's no longer red. Um, but the, the danger with it is, is that. Um, that's almost as good. It's a little bit tougher actually. It's uh, been cooked a bit quicker. 
Now the, uh, yeah, there's a lot of wastage. If you can get away without doing this, I'd highly recommend it. So rotisserie is a kidney, and I'm not going to try it. But uh, if you want to eat them, you can. Get these bits here, try that. That's slightly different meat. So this was, um, sorry, this was off out of the frying pan, this midsection, the loin, I guess you'd call it, and it was cooked quite uh, well and evenly. It's still probably raw up against the spine, but it's well done. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. So as we go in, it gets more raw, more rare. So we'll just try the outside here. And that's beautiful too. A little bit sort of chewy, but not really chewy. I'll just try a bit closer to the, the softer areas of the, the animal. Different, slightly different flavour. Excellent. Um, that's the winner too. Now this is the one that's in the oil foil cooked inside um, the coals basically. I had to double it up halfway through because I didn't put it put it on there thick enough to start with. Okay. Right, look at that. Fantastic. Very tender. Slicing off beautifully with a relatively blunt pocket knife. I'll try that. Really nice. It doesn't have the smoky flavour because it wasn't exposed to the smoke because it had a little log in there that it was cooking alongside. So, um, but still, yeah, brilliant. And that's actually probably, yeah, that's the most done, done one out of the bunch because the, the heat was very well uh, surrounding the, yeah, it's cooked down to the bone, see that? Everything's clear, there's no blood left next to that bone. So, um, yeah, good. Good quality, mate. Fantastic. All right. So that's our experiment done. I'm uh, glad I've done it and um, proved a few points. And I'd say for ease of cooking, the rotisserie wins. For evenness of cooking, the alfoil wins in the coals. And um, the frying pan, well, it would have worked, but uh, I just need to give it a bit longer and I think that piece of meat would have done a lot better. And if you can get away, yeah, definitely don't chuck your meat straight on the coals. It just turns into carbon. Okay, so we've done our cooking and got a pretty good camp fire happening, which is all burnt down. So the easiest thing about this whole process is that it's easy to put your fire out if you just smother it and then when you leave your campsite it's completely concealed apart from the fact that the ground has been a bit disturbed you're not left with a great big pile of pile of ashes and coals and and a fire that you're going to have to put out and um, you know leave all this evidence behind and but there you go you can stomp it down and flatten it out and you can put some leaves on top of whatever and you're left with nothing so that's the best thing about a, a trench fire or a fire in a pit when you're camping well thanks for watching this week's episode please like and subscribe and click on the bell and all that stuff and uh, don't you reckon this is a great crop of wheat here? Beautiful. And uh, I think these animals here, they like it too. These chooks, they're having a great time. <laughs> They've um, been sprung. I kind of wondered what was uh, eating the wheat at the edge of the crop. It turns out to be the things that give me the eggs. That's all right. I don't mind, bit of free ranging. Just don't tell the share farmer. All right, I'll see you later.